Welcome back to family. Here we are back on Stellarium, and we are taking a step backwards. Uh, we are going to uh, uncover some some things that I've found and that are tied to my last two videos. Um, and it's also tied to the work that I've been doing since before 2015. Um, I've been tracking these signs in the heavens for a long time. I began this work in about 2005. And by the time of the Revelation 12 sign, um, I had a, a decent grasp of the Maseroth. Um, I mean, I would still say I was still in the uh, baby stages. I consider all of us still in the baby stages. Uh, the more I learn, the more I realize that it's really grandiose and it's extremely deep and uh, you can spend your entire life doing this research and still uh, only understand just a fraction. So uh, the words in Job really stand out <coughs> with uh, you know him speaking to Job about can he loose the bands of Orion or uh, you know, the, the, the speech there in, in that verse is, is what really motivated me to do this work because uh, it seems to me based on my research that like we've said before in past videos, that every star, every planet, every asteroid, and comet, meteor, even meteors, I believe, uh, play a role in the story in the stars or the heavenly tale. And here we're looking at the constellation of Virgo, and we're going to take a step back in time. Uh, here we are, June the 3rd, 2017. Um, the reason we're taking a step back is this is where I received uh, a sign that I have been researching since 2017 and it's taken these seven years to finally come to the conclusion I believe that I've uncovered uh, the star story and within within the numerical codes of this star story it, it's pointing to uh, the ipet goat uh, depiction of the enemy's plan within that star story and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this a little deeper. It's going to take me a little bit of time, but I don't want this to go too long. So I might have to break this into multiple parts before we get back to uh, the Escape of the Bride series. Um, but this is really important to take a step back and look at 
seven years ago uh, what was going on and how that applies to what we're seeing today so the first thing that we want to look at is on this day we have a couple things that stood out to me about the constellation of Virgo uh, first most of you know uh, while I have it up here we have Esther is in Virgo at the same time that the moon and Jupiter are in Virgo and uh, if you don't already know and you haven't been following this channel for long or you don't know about the Revelation 12 sign in 2017 uh, this line here between these stars uh, starting at Parima uh, is considered the womb line of Virgo um, excuse me. and uh, then down here this line here with Spica which is considered the harvest it can also be birth and this is considered the birth line where the planets and the sun and the moon go through this constellation and the way essentially the way that everything travels along the ecliptic here is that these things uh, within this area we'll call it of Virgo because <coughs> this line these down lines don't really matter when it comes to the actual womb because these are just lines between stars it doesn't necessarily equate to uh, the womb what we do is we look at Perima and we look at Spica and these these areas between Parema could be even over here. Uh, I don't think you can see my cursor, but if you were to come from Parema down to the ecliptic or with a straight line across as the way that it's depicted, then you would see the entrance point, and then we can see how Spica is out outside of the ecliptic and that can be the line of the birth so we have the moon Jupiter and Esther all within the, the womb section of Virgo and w one of the things that I noticed when I was doing this work is I kept getting pointed to I pet go in the codes and so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to 38 Virginis this is an F type main sequence star and uh, this main sequence star is in the constellation of Virgo and uh, this is the star that I have been researching for seven years and I originally believed that it had to do with the iPad goat video um, but I couldn't figure out exactly what it meant until recently. So I want to break this down for you. Uh, I've had this information since, uh, well, it's been a couple years, but it, I, I got the latest information that is helping me to uncover these codes just within the last uh, six months and so let's take a deep look at 
what I am seeing in the heavens, in the Maseroth, uh, and let's uh, see if we can work together to uncover what this star story is telling us. So the first thing that I noticed is on this date, there were a couple other things that stood out to me that uh, were really, really strong language in the Maseroth tied to uh, what we're seeing here in Virgo. So let's go do this first before we look at 38 Virginis. Uh, the first thing that I noticed was that the sun is between the horns of Taurus at this time and Jupiter is in the womb of Virgo well now uh, with the last sign that I, I showed you in the last two videos we see that this is reversed we see Jupiter is now in between the horns of Taurus and the Sun in October will be the womb of Virgo. So this, on this day, stood out to me. Uh, I also saw that Venus is directly on the northern fish, on one of the bands or the threads. And uh, I found a code associated with one of the asteroids that is the silver and gold threads. And um, to me, that has really strong language for a couple of different things. The silver and the gold have always been associated with the portals of, uh, or the gates that we find in the Silver Gate and the Golden Gate. And the Silver Gate, <coughs> we know, is, is here between Arika and Orion at the foot of Gemini is the, the Silver Gate, and then the Golden Gate is here between Sagittarius and Ophiuchus or Scorpius. Scorpius. Um, you can see that the Golden Gate is also associated with the, the tabernacle or the tent or ship or ark and uh, this is the golden gate but if we take a look here at the constellation of Pisces which Venus is here on the northern fish we see that there are threads or lines that are connected to both of fish, and they're tied to Cetus, who is the sea serpent. Um, in other words, this is an association with the physical, the underworld, and death. And in order for us to reach new life, which is tied to Cepheus and Cassiopeia. Um, we have to make it away from this physical underworld in order to get to the heavenly. And we can see how 
this other fish is going back into the water stream of Aquarius and depending on the interpretation that is given we have uh, different understandings of these these different threads tied to these different fish and these different fish can be looked at as um, Israel and Judah it can also be looked at as um, Gentile and Jew it can also be looked at as the bride and, and those who come after the bride um, the general house um, there's a lot of different ideas on, on what this representation is. <clears throat> but Venus being on this line at this time, uh, had this was very strong language to me. Another thing was at this, at this time I saw an alignment that also was very strong to me. We see that that uh, uh, if we go over here in Stellarium and we pull up this view settings we can see that, that we have the meridian here and this ecliptic so you can turn these off and on uh, when you open up this program you can go to view settings up in the left hand top corner and then once you've selected those those settings then you can close and then you can come over here uh, and you can close this out up here next to the Stellarium web to the left you'll see the three bars you just click into there and that'll automatically close that window out um, but what I noticed is that this uh, this line comes through the water stream of Aquarius. It goes through Cepheus, and it comes over, and it goes directly through Leo, and it ends up exactly over the sexton and goes directly through Hydra which is another sign of the dragon or the serpent and so um, this was more strong language um, for the things that I was looking at on this day um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here and we're going to look at the thing that I found and we're going to go here to 38 Virginis so when when the iPad goat came out um, there was um, a lot of video producers doing the breakdown one of the things that I noticed was that Jupiter did uh, an about face um, it, it turned uh, it, it entered the room and then it, it did it turn right before the spica line and then it went back up through the womb to this location and then it it uh, turned right here and started going back into the womb and we all know that on September the 9th that 
Jupiter crossed over the Spica line as if Jupiter the child was being born. But uh, I had found this 38 Virginis when I was looking at where Jupiter made its turn. And uh, over the years, um, that just stuck in my head. And, and then one of the things that I noticed is if we go up here to 38 Virginis, again, we have 38 Virginis is an F-type main sequence star in the constellation of Virgo. So now what I want to do is I want to go back here and we're on the iPad Goat and we're looking at uh, the Heliofont video and at 38 seconds into the video we see this F shown and then if we go forward to here uh, let's pull it back uh, and let's go ahead and play this forward And I want to show you something that I just found recently. Uh, this is really hard to nail down. This just happened to uh, show me this in one fraction of the scene and I haven't been able to get it back exactly the way that I first found it and I've been trying ever since to get back to that frame that I was shown so we're going to do my best to get to this point here Okay, so here we are, and um, this is as close as I can get it. It's not exactly where I was before, but it's very close. We can see here at 113, we see the F here at Obama's hand. And we also see the 101 show up in the evolution. We also see a white flag show up into the hand of the hangman. And it essentially is connected by a cord or a thread to the dragon or the serpent and so to me this was associated with the fish that we are essentially the children of Messiah and we are holding up the white flag the dragon is in control but you can see that the line is very thin in this section as if it is going to break 
and there are some things depicted here that can be looked at in depth. I'm not going to really get into them, but for those of you who do this kind of decoding work, um, in this frame, we are seeing this this shark, and it look it looks as if uh, it, it to me it looks as if it is uh, connected to Obama, and uh, in the other frame that I had locked in, it looked as though there was um, like a spirit being transferred from the shark to Obama as if uh, you can see here in this pink and black and yellow image right in the middle of the screen it looks as if there is a brain being split by a lightning bolt. Um, we know the scripture that Satan falls as lightning from heaven. This could be a depiction of, of the fall of Satan from heaven. Um, from from the access to the gates and then becomes stuck in this matrix which we can see here is a depiction of that indwelling into a man and it could be that this is showing that, that this is the person that is going to happen to. We also see the 101 which is the door and if we go forward to these next following scenes we go directly to the Revelation 12 signs that are being broken down by way of depictions and for many of the watchmen who have done videos on iPad Goat, um, I think everybody's opinion matters, and I've seen a lot of different ideas on how this, how they believe that this, these, what these scenes mean, and I've, I've gathered a lot of information from a lot of great people doing wonderful work to try to uncover these codes and I do believe that this is the enemy's plan written in code language and if you are able to decipher the enemy's code then you'll know his plan and then his plan can't work against you things sometimes take a long time to decipher, but uh, the more information we have, the more we can uncover. And that's what this is all about for me, is uncovering the things that I'm seeing in, in this area. This has always bugged me, and then I came across this F-type main sequence star and it was tied to what I found here with this 38 Virginis and where Jupiter does its about face. And I just happened to find that the moon aligns here with uh, with multiple other signs in the constellation of Leo and the constellation of Sextans and uh, which is what I've been working on 
right now is this comet to Chinshan Atlas lining up with the sextant and then heading back to the womb of Virgo. Well, that comet also comes very close to 38 Virginis on its way through the womb section. And it also is tied to the asteroid Dabowska that uh, helped me to finish my determination of this sign because it led me back to the iPad Go through the codes. So I'm going to go over the codes of Dombowska really quick and then we're going to go and look at um, um, that that asteroid at, as it is working in conjunction with the, the comet atlas that we're, we're talking about lately. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over these codes because these codes are tied to um, what we're seeing in all of this. So the first thing that we're looking at, uh, remember we, we saw Venus attached to one of the threads. So when I when I looked up the codes for asteroid Dombowska, um, Dombowska is 349 Dombowska and the Strong's Greek is to cry out. And we have the following codes for asteroid Dombowska. Uh, the silver and gold threads. As in the days of Noah, the great American eclipse, bride of Jesus Christ, wormwood star, white horse rider. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then we have the following codes. For Dembowska. Um, Dembowska equals harvest, it equals I pet goat, equals end of days, it equals a rapture communication, and it equals gatekeeper. And so I want to quickly go to well let's look at this really quick um, on this day we have Jupiter doing its about face at the same time that the moon is aligned with this scene so we have Jupiter which has always been known as the king planet. We have 38 Virginis. And when I was doing the code for 38 Virginis, um, one of the things that stood out to me was within the numerical code 38, um, Sometimes you can add, sometimes you can subtract, sometimes you can add uh, one to the equation. Um, there are multiple things that you can do with these numbers, but the number 38, to me, uh, when I looked at this, I looked at 3 minus 8 equals 5. And to me, this was like a sign of the five wise virgins that this is a message directly to the wise virgins and we see that the moon here is a depiction of the bride 
and we have Jupiter as the king. So this is a message to the bride and the wise virgins. And the reason that we can see this this way is we have this Venus alignment here with this northern fish. And if you've ever done any Maseroth research on Cassiopeia and Cepheus, uh, and you should also do some research on Andromeda, uh, because these are all playing into this northern fish sign. And so it's really important for if you're doing your your research uh, to dig a little bit deeper into the ancient information about each of these houses or constellations. And it's really important to understand this star story. So this 38 Virginis being tied to um, this area of Virgo where Jupiter makes its turnabout really stood out to me and I originally um, saw, uh, trying to remember exactly where I saw this, uh, I, I, I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I remember seeing somebody's video where it was um, depicting the Jupiter going through the womb, and it had, it had something to do with um, a, a part of iPad goat. And I can't remember exactly what it is. I'm going to have to look back through all my notes and get back on another video. We're going to have to make this into two parts because we're already almost at 40 minutes. And I'm trying to keep these uh, under 40 minutes. Um, so what I want to do in the next video is I want to bring back uh, our attention to Asteroid Dombowska and we're going to take a deeper look at how this is tied to the iPad Goat depiction. Um, for now, uh, if you can do your homework and uh, if you have any information about this 2017 sign of Revelation 12, if you could go ahead and put it in the comments because we're going to try to dig deeper into what this is depicting because it's matching with this, this sign in I pet goat and there's no way that we are um, having these things align so well if we're not right on top of, of the target and so for those of you out there who do this work and are digging deeper yourself you can look at this and find anything else that uh, is tied to this bride and this is also tied to the child. Um, I know I just saw a video today from hourly watch about the child and uh, I have shown you that that child um, 
asteroid actually lined up directly with um, multiple constellations that are showing us uh, that we're really close to flight and so I believe that the things that we're looking at here tied to the sexton and knowing that that this location here is is where Jupiter is making its turn in the womb and it being tied to Comet Sun Chin Chan Atlas and what is about to happen exactly seven years later, these things cannot be a coincidence or chance. Uh, there's too many there's too many signs and too many codes that I have found uh, associated with this. And there's no way that these asteroids and comets are just showing up in random locations by chance. So, thanks for coming. And for those of you out there doing this work, uh, let's dig deeper. Because I think that what we're seeing in the heavens is our final chapter before there are great things that transpire here on planet Earth. And um, I think in order for us to all be ready, we need to be looking up and watching for these signs. Thanks for coming again. Much love. We'll see you very soon.